So I said earlier that in a topic model, every document can contain multiple topics, um, but that it, the model prefers to have a fewer number of topics, so a couple big topics or maybe even one big topic, and that this is caused by using the Dirichlet distribution and the alpha hyperparameter. So let's now actually go into a little bit more technical depth on what the Dirichlet distribution actually is and uh, how the alpha parameter, alpha hyperparameter controls the number of topics per document. So technically in a topic model, every topic and every document is a probability distribution. Right? So the idea that a document is a, a probability distribution means that if you have a document that is about um, a football and about corruption, every word you draw has a chance of being in topic A and it has a chance of being in topic B. So it's a distribution of probabilities over the various topics in that document. And the same for topics within words. Since you um, have multiple of these distributions, so there's one distribution for each document on how it's um, and how the probabilities of different topics are distributed over the documents, these distributions are actually randomly drawn. Uh, so you, you draw a distribution from a set of distributions, and the thing that you draw the distributions from is called a Dirichlet distribution, and you draw multinomial distributions from it. So if you sample from the Dirichlet distribution, you get a multinomial distribution, or in other terms, a, a probability distribution over multiple groups, for example, topics. So what is this Dirichlet distribution? A metaphor that is often used to explain the Dirichlet distribution is the Chinese restaurant process, or maybe more suitable for an academic setting, the conference table process. Now let's assume um, that we have a world in which we can actually go to conferences again. And in that world, you go to a conference that you don't know a lot of people and it's time for the conference dinner. So you need to sit down at the table. Um, and of course, you're afraid that if you choose an empty table and you sit there by yourself, that at the end of the night you're still sitting there by yourself and you're all lonely and you haven't made any new friends. So uh, what you do is you, you prefer to pick a table that already has people on it. Um, but let's assume that you don't just want to sit at the biggest table. What you are going to do is, is pick a table where each table has a probability that is proportional to the amount of people that are already sitting there. So if there's one table with one person and one table with five people, you are five times as likely to sit at the table with five people. Um, and let's also assume that every table starts with a baseline. So maybe we start with one person sitting at every table. So the first guest that comes in um, is equally likely to sit at every table. The second guest that comes in is slightly more likely to join the first guest because that table now has two people. Now, so we start with the mostly empty restaurants and everybody enters this restaurant and they do the same thing. Um, so the more empty tables, they probably stay empty and the full tables get more people proportionally. Um, but randomly, somebody can take a low probability event and actually join a table with not a lot of people there yet. So um, as long as there's not an infinite amount of people at the table yet, the, it can still change. But as more people enter, you get into some sort of equilibrium. Um, and this equilibrium, where maybe like one table is seven people, the other is three people, and the third one is zero people, can be seen as the, the distribution of topics over the document, where the document has 70% from the first topic, 30% from the second topic, and zero from the third topic. And the, um, the model prefers um, to have a couple of very big topics rather than equally distributed topics, because once a topic gets more um, people, so to say, it has a higher chance of attracting even more people. So that explains the skewedness towards a solution with one or a couple of relatively big topics rather than a uniform distribution over all the topics. Now, a extremely cool visualization of this has been made by the friendly people at Unicoblens. So let's have a, a, a look at how uh, we can actually visualize this uh, conference table process. This website from Unicoblens is an implementation of the Chinese restaurant process or the, the conference dinner progress process. So um, let's assume that there's four tables and the first table has three people, the second has two, the third has only one, and the fourth table has five people. And now um, you have your little tray of food and you enter the restaurant and you need to pick where to seat. So um, the idea of the, the restaurant process is that you will go to table one with a chance of 27%, table two with a chance of 18%, table three with a chance of 90.9%, and table five, four with a chance of 0.45%. Um, so you enter and you pick table one 
and now actually um, because table one is one more participant the next person has a slightly higher chance of picking table four and a slightly lower chance of picking any of the other tables the next person actually also picks table one and now table one and four are the same size and the third person also decides to pick table one um, everything is possible um, with probabilities right but the next person takes table five uh, table four and the person after that actually picks the, the lower chance of going to table two and now table two actually gets a slightly better chance again and as this goes on and on and we have more people picking um, all kind of different tables then um, what you see is that at some point one or two of the tables are starting to win right so in this case table one is, is has a 67 participant so 67 percent chance table for a 30 percent chance now if we add 100 more people this can uh, change a little bit again but um, you see an equilibrium forming and actually adding more people doesn't make big changes anymore because every random choice by one individual becomes less and less important as the bigger numbers are taking over so the results that you see here um, is a distribution over these four tables which can be seen as a probability distribution of about um, um, uh, what is it about 50 percent about um, 20 percent almost zero and about 25 percent now let's start again and now let's start with um, four tables each with only uh, one person there right so we have four tables um, that are equally distributed um, and each of them have a 25 percent chance now again the first person um, already increases the chance of taking table three from point three to point four and all the other ones now have point two the second person picked table four um, the third table pick table three again and what you see now is that already the table three and four together have almost all of the probability mass right so there's a what is it 80 percent um, of the probabilities are over here actually um, yeah so it's 80 percent um, and it's quite likely that the next people will all so go to table three and four and now even table three is getting much more um, so this is almost 60% and this one is 30%. And again, if we add more people here, then what you see is that um, this table is winning um, and the chance of somebody actually joining the other two tables is pretty slow, low, but even if one person joins, then the other table still dominates. And so what you see here is that every time you run this, you will get a distribution over the four tables and the distribution normally has one winner or maybe one and a half winner. Um, now let's suppose we start with more people we start with 10 people at every table then the first person that enters doesn't actually make that much difference right it's still they're all approximately the same probability um, so the next person can easily go to a different table and you see that uh, the people are distributed quite randomly and if we add 100 people then it's still possible that one of them will become bigger but it's quite unlikely that one of the tables will completely dominate all the other tables because they all started with a um, have with a buffer of 10 people as it were um, so that the choice of individual people doesn't matter that much and so in this case topic three is still the biggest but the, the smaller topics are still fairly high and if we run this again we will probably see approximately the same sort of distribution although of course it might not be table two that wins it might this time be table one um, so let's see what happens uh, in fact table two wins again but that's pure luck and table four is now the second biggest so what you what you see here is that every time you you play the game right every time you you run the restaurant process the result is a distribution of people over tables that can also be seen as a probability distribution over those four categories um, and if you start with a lot of people at the table you get a relatively uh, uniform distribution, a relatively even distribution. If you start with a very low number of people at the table, um, we can even do 0 0.1 people at the table. Um, maybe they are PhD students, right? Um, so they count a little bit, but they don't count for full. Um, sorry, that was a bad joke. So what you see here is that now if you have one person, then all of a sudden um, the probability of this topic really jumps, right? It already jumps to 80%. And if the next person now also chooses this topic, um, the chance of somebody else actually joining one of the PhD students at the other tables is really, really low. Um, so with a, um, have with 0.1 people at the table at the beginning, the chance of one topic dominating um, overall is actually really big. So let's see what happens in this case. Well, no, actually by pure chance, another table actually did get one extra person. Um, and what you get is a distribution of one very big topic, one smaller topic, and two topics that don't occur at all. Well, let's run it again see if we get the same results 
again uh, by pure luck they pick table three and now actually they keep picking table three until there's lots of people on table three and actually in the end table three actually gets all the participants and has an almost 100 percent chance so the higher the number of people at the table the bigger the chance that more people um, uh, will join all of the tables sorry so what i really mean is um, the lower the effect of one individual choosing the particular table if you have fewer people starting at the table then the effects of the individual choice are higher and as a result the resulting probability distribution is much more skewed towards a single topic or maybe a topic and a half while with a higher number of people initially the uh, you will get a much more even distribution one final thing that's interesting to note is you can actually have a uh, asymmetric distribution of wealth so you could say let's start with two people or um, three people at table one and only one person at all the other tables then uh, probably table one is going to um, be the biggest topic for all of the um, times we run this of course because they start with little bias and this can be useful if you for example know that in your specific corpus there's going to be one dominating um, topic so you want that topic to be present in almost all of your documents in this case if you use an asymmetric um, number of people an asymmetric alpha hyperparameter to put it a little bit more technical you can um, force the topic model to actually have one bigger topic so that the other topics can um, take the remaining variation and this one can take the more constant terms. So how does this restaurant process actually uh, mimic the Dirichlet distribution um, as we described? So um, think about it this way. The restaurant process converges to a distribution of people over tables. This can be seen as the distribution of, for example, uh, topics over the documents. So you can see the tables as representing a multinomial distribution, and you can see the process of running the, the restaurant process once as a draw from the Dirichlet distribution. So the first time maybe most people choose to sit at table one, the second time more people might choose to sit at table five. If you think of the initial number of people at the tables, um, you can understand that this actually controls how, how evenly spread the people are going to be. If you start with 10 people at every table, then the first person that enters doesn't actually change everything that much. If there's only one person at a table, then if that table is picked by the first person that comes in, suddenly this um, table has a twice as big chance of attracting the next person as each of the other tables. Um, and you can even have fractional um, people at the table. So you could have 0 0.1 people at the table. That's a, a little bit more difficult to imagine. But then it means that the first person is actually really important in determining which table becomes the most popular. And you'll see that the fewer people there are at the table initially, the bigger the effect of the first couple people that walk into the restaurants. And so the more skewed the distribution is going to be. So um, the alpha hyperparameter is the number of people um, that starts at the table and it determines how it is skewed and we call it a hyperparameter because it is not a parameter of the model right so the parameters of the model are the things that we're estimating so the the distribution of topics over documents etc um, the hyperparameter is something that controls how the actual parameters of the model are estimated so it's a parameter of of the parameters and normally the hyperparameter is set by the researcher while the regular parameters are fit by the statistical model. So intuitively, if you lower the alpha, there um, are less people sitting at the table initially. So the initial choices of the customers have a larger effect. So it's likelier that a single table will get all, will get all the participants. And if you translate this back to a topic model, what it means is that if you have a lower alpha, you will on average have fewer topics per documents. So with a low alpha, maybe most documents are about uh, one, maybe two, maybe three topics, but not often about five different topics. In our experience, this really helps the interpretability of the results. Um, we don't really think that journalists write articles about 25 different topics, right? A newspaper article generally is about like one or two or a couple topics. Um, of course, it has a flip side um, because every word has to be assigned to a topic in the documents um, and every document probably also contains some words that are not strictly related to those topics they will um, the, the, the words will need to be put in those, into those topics so the topic might become a little bit blurrier so by making a, a, a clearer definition of which topics are in the documents you get a little bit fuzzier definition of which topics contain which words 
Um, however, overall, uh, our uh, findings are that a uh, lower alpha usually increases the interpretability of the, the models, um, obviously up to a certain point. Uh, if you if you lower the alpha too much, then you're essentially throwing away the benefits of a mixture model and you simply get a one topic solution for each of the documents and then you lose the idea that um, most articles in the wild can actually well be about two or three topics. So um, you're looking for an alpha that, that is skewed towards one, two or maybe sometimes three topics without very often giving you five different topics um, for each of the documents.